Tonight on TCR, I join you with another update on the classic Clubman Estate. You guessed it, more rust and more dust, with the added buttery shot of welding porn. Well, amateur welding porn. But I'm sure if you've been a follower of this channel for some time, you will realise I will literally take my hand to anything just to say I've given it a go. So join me with more mistakes, more banter and the odd swear word. to another update of the Clubman Estate. We've not been up to much lately purely because of life getting in the way, work, adaptations to this garage to make it more manageable and of course making the rotisserie jig. There is some strengthening still to do which I did say that I needed to do in the last episode, however we have cut the wings off and the reason for that is one, room and two, they were bollocks and I will show you them right now. And here is the rusty wing. Now, a lot of you will probably say that I should have saved this, but it's wafer thin here, wafer thin there. It's all pitted and rusted around there. The same here, it's just all flaking off. And even if I was to sandblast that and try and save it and get all the under seal off, I think it's going to take a lot of filler work, especially in the engine bay, just to get it looking smart. Now, a lot of you probably won't do the filler work in the engine bay because you think it's too anal, but this car that I'm doing is going to be better than the red one. So. That is why that's had to go, I'm afraid. So with the wings cut off, we can now see what we're left with, and we're left with a lot of rot on the inside of the wings. This is the A panel, and something I found with this once I was looking underneath the car, well, you can see all this here, there was a big patch of like silicon and bog, and there's actually no metal there. It just breaks off in your hand. Now, I said to my friend the other day, I said, why? Look, it's just it's just completely gone, hence why it's bent and we're not keeping it. I said to my friend the other day, why, why did they repair cars like this in the past? And he said, what you've got to remember is, back in the day, these were like 50 quid. And he said, they'd do anything to keep it on the road. And now they're actually worth some money. People look back and think, why was it repaired like that? And it was to keep it going. Whereas now, because they're worth quite a bit and people want to keep them, it makes sense to do them properly. So... These cars tend to be used for fun and for dry days. Some people do use them daily. However, you're never gonna keep it mint using it daily because they're just not up to the standard of modern cars. So we'll have a look at what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a bit of welding in this episode as well to make the locking mechanism for this jig because as you saw in the last one, this happened. As you can see, what? What the f How did that just happen? Yeah. I know, stupid mistake, but we've learned from that. And I'm going to show you exactly how we've come up with a way to solve it. Now this is, I'm just let me get rid of that. Now this is the trestle here. And then um, obviously the car spins, but there's nothing to lock it in. So the system that I've come up with is, I'm going to chop some nice little chunks of this box section, weld a bit on there, weld a bit on there. And then this rod, or I'm going to get some threaded rod, will slide through the both of them. So obviously when it's in its position, that, will not move because it's all welded together. I was going to drill and tap through here and do it that way, but it just seems a lot of messing around, a lot of expensive tools for no apparent reason. So I think the best way is obviously to have a piece of metal sat on top, a piece of metal on here and slide a rod through the both of them and then that won't move. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's set the welder up. You may be sat there wondering why I've welded on the bottom of this scaffold bar and on the top of the trestle. That is so when the car is upside down, we can lock it in the upside down position. So with all that said and done, let's try and turn this car upside down on my own. I 
I bet one of you sat there at home right now realising what I've done wrong. If you have, well done to you. If you realise this, that has moved with the scaffold bar so these no longer line up. So what I need to do is get that back in line and I'm going to have to tack weld shell mount to the scaffold bar so it all spins in synchronisation. Otherwise, we are what we would call pissing in the wind. I know I said I was going to weld it, but I just had an epic brainwave just to throw a bolt through. That way, I'm not having to grind anything when I actually want to take this jig off and sell it on to someone that actually will get a use out of it when I've used it. So yeah, it made sense just to whack a bolt through there. So let's try and spin it upside down, take two. And let's face it lads, for me to spin this upside down on my own, all it can be is these swans. <laughs> Now, what I'm really struggling to understand with this is the, un the inside of the boot floor is absolutely split mint apart from one hole. But underneath, it looks like a sack of <laughs> So I'll be very surprised to see what's under that when we get the underseal off it, which will be the next thing that we're doing. Um, just rust, rust everywhere. It's apparent the more you dig, the more you will find. It's a shame the same motto doesn't apply to searching for gold. With the mini upside down and the daylight presenting itself through the holes in the panels, we certainly have a lot of work cut out. I mean, just look at the flex in that. That's of the Landsat. It's just all. Oh. How? 200 quid in panels, eh? No chance. Big hole there. This is why we're doing a full floor. What's the heel board like? Um, the heel board sounds pretty decent. However, I have snapped the bolts and they are a frigging pig to drill out. So, for what it's worth, I might just replace it. The irony of a brand new fuel hose and a clip. Why, why would you go to the effort of putting that in when this is just so bad? Oh well, I might save that clip for something else. Wow, what a task. There's a prime example of pigeon shit welds. Uh, all that's coming out. I'm gonna have to do two new whatever these are called inner inner arch inner wings at the front they both need replacing this one is shocking look at how that's been plated up Ugh, i don't know now with the car upside down and we've got a temporary locking mechanism on this side i'm going to add one to the back just so it's a bit more stiff because uh although i've only been welding about a week in days um i've not got a lot of faith in it just yet the penetration is bang on the welds look pretty good however there's always that chance that it could go and I don't really want to be the one that's uh, be seeing you and in a grave too early. This is upside down. I'm sorry it's been short and sweet. It's just been a few little things, just a bit of an update. And uh, at the minute, it seems to be... All right, another beer halfway. At the minute, it seems to be more sweeping up than, than ever. I spent two hours tidying this garage yesterday and the floor is just caked in bits of mini again. So um, I think I've bought a, a dust bucket, basically. Not a rust bucket, a dust bucket, because I'm just sweeping this car up more than I've actually got left of it every time I turn it upside down. But that's the way it goes. Uh, before we go, I want to show you something rather quickly, if this is just going to stay. Yes, it is. For a while now, we've not really had much new stock on the TTR store. However, we've been designing these, and these are something that I'm really proud of, and the guy that created them for me is really proud of as well. We'll go to a quick cutaway to explain. Oh, literally cut away. Ah, oh, just cut myself gear knob with the signature on it and a handbrake lever. There is a third piece to this kit. We're waiting on it to be developed. It's been a year in the making. We've come into some manufacturer issues, so they will be out very soon. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, why would I want your signature on my car? Now, there's a very good answer to that. And yeah, you might not, fair enough. But this is gonna be the branding going forward. There's gonna be two types of brand. The TCR stuff is like the lights, the socket set and all that. 
but we're going to start making some high-end stuff like this for cars, like finishing off pieces that are high quality and uh, that's going to be the signature mark, it's just going to be the, my signature and that's, that's the branding going forward. So I hope that explains a little bit of it. Uh, let me know what you think, these do come in two colours, possibly three colours, we're aiming to do black, brown and Alcantara, the Alcantara will have a surcharge but they won't be out yet, they'll be out when the third piece of the puzzle comes and I can't wait to show you all of that. And by now you must know when it comes to the end of the episode, make sure you do everything in style and I'll see you in the next one.